the name value. Sometimes the name value does a lot, Dan. And, you know, when you go, you look outside of like the ADP, sometimes you can find value. I think, yeah. you know what I mean? Like that's, I think that's one of the more undervalued things is how to know who's going to be the next emerging player. And people often do it with star power. We talked about Anthony Edwards being like the next player up and going to top 10. Who's a player outside of the top 12 in ADP right now who you think has a real shot of being like a top five player, not just entering the first round, but like in top five asset and fantasy and category leagues? Uh, for me, it's I think it's Carl Anthony Towns. From what I've seen just in the, you know, the couple preseason games, he didn't shoot particularly well uh, last game, but I think there's just an enormous opportunity for him to be the cat of Minnesota when he was playing under Tom Thibodeau. And if you look at those numbers, he was an all NBA player. It was his first time being an all star. He was averaging over 12 rebounds a game, still shooting 50 over 50 percent from the field, bombing from three, still shooting efficiently there. Um, now that he's not having a a a rim protector to play alongside of him, because, I mean, Cat was largely a stretch four in Minnesota. He's going to be playing the five with Mitchell Robinson now. So that now that he's getting his rebounding and potentially some blocks back to his fantasy profile. I mean, he was a top 12 player three years ago before Rudy got there. I mean, and I we were drafting him like as a top five guy. Yeah. And I think he's going to probably get back to that. And I, I know that there's a lot of uses to go around in, in New York, but he's going to be the second option on offense. So with, with the way his skill set is, he can play pick and prop, pick and pop. He can run the screen and roll, obviously knock down three point shooter. With that efficiency and now his ability to get stocks and, and boards again, I'm back in on Carlin. It's a really good point, man, because he's a, an efficient player. Like, for the most part, Cat's a pretty efficient player. And in, in this offense, there's going to be less defensive eyes on him. And I think the stench is kind of on Cat because for mm -hmm. a while there, he was really injury prone. And then, like you mentioned, the defensive stuff kind of went away once Rudy got there. So it's like we have this thought. And, and then, obviously, like the off-court stuff with Cat. And uh, yeah, after all that, <laughs> you know, we got, there's the fun stuff with Cat, too. But, like, you're getting a motivated Cat, a guy who was dedicated, it seemed like, to Minnesota. And they kind of did him dirty. So now playing for championship aspirations on this New York Knicks team around a lot of talent too. It's going to make things easier on Canton. Like you mentioned, as we've seen already in the preseason, he's been tearing shit up. So I think this, like, it's, it's weird because I think some players we get this, like in our heads, we build up this image about them and it kind of catapults their value down. I think Kyrie Irving is another example of this, a player who like the off the off court stuff kind of like makes their fantasy value go down, even though for the most part, like a Kyrie type guy is always top 15 on a per game basis. So yeah. I think cat is the same thing where like, on a per game basis, we can expect a bigger output. I really love, um, I think that's a really good pick. And he's going, what, pick, it looks like pick, what, 20, 20 like mid-20s? Yeah, he's going, uh, where's Cat going? Cat's going 20, his, his ADP is moving up. It, it was 26 to oh, start yeah, the season. Game, I bet it is. Now, now it's 21. So I think we're going to continue to see that move closer to like that mid-second round. Another player that I think is truly underrated and has an opportunity here, it, it's, you know, this is one of them J-Hand picks, man. And for, for whatever reason, I go to the guys that are like, I talk outliers. And Chet Holmgren to me has all the upside of like a top five guy due to like an efficient player at the big spot that'll that'll hit a three blocking a ton of shots like he gives you a ton of value. And maybe it's not Wembenyama and he's not the caliber of player of Wemby. But to me, I get a more efficient version and maybe a dialed back version on some of the counting stats. And to me, I think an increased role is coming for, for Chet Holmgren. You talked about Shea earlier on the pod, said, you know, kind of deferring to some of these other options. I think one of the main beneficiaries of this is Chet Holmgren. And if we can get an increased output offensively, if he can find more of a role for himself, we get an increase in threes, even more efficiency than we did last year from the stripe. Like, I think that there's a world where Chet Holmgren can be in this top five category just pay, uh, based purely off of efficiency. And yeah, we won't get 20. I'm not, I'm not expecting 25 and 10. Like, that's not what I'm saying. But I think Chet Holmgren, like right now being a third round pick or back in second round, if you're, you know, in a deeper league, to me is a little bit wild. I, I think he belongs more in this second round category um, than the third round discussion. And in your leagues, I think there's somebody that probably thinks like me and the craziest stack of all time would probably be like a Wemby Chet stack. That might have you set up for mother for the whole year, bro. It could act. I mean, it, it could happen because I think you know Chet's ADP is definitely 
creeping more towards the back of the second round, like mid to, to late second. Um, the thing, I, so I had Chet as like number 15, I think on my board when I first came out with my rankings and I was like very solid on it. Like, all right, this dude is just a fantasy. Like he's one of those fantasy players that you want to, he'll just be efficient. He'll get blocks. Um, he'll take that natural progression and, and go up in, in a second NBA season. My one concern about him though, is like, are we valuing his blocks too high? Like if he doesn't block two shots a game, 2.3 blocks a game, where does that put him? I think he kind of becomes like an Evan Mobley type where he's like, oh, he's like a third round, second, third round guy. But if he can sustain his block rate or potentially go up even more, yeah, he could be, a, he's going to be a first round player. Like he finished top, he was top 20 last year. And that was a rookie season where he was just still kind of figuring it out. Well, now he's got a full off season. The team got better. Like it's only going up for everybody on the Thunder. And you know what I'm saying? Like, I think he could, if he could get up to 18 points a game, still maintain over two blocks. Yeah, he's going to be in that first round conversation for sure. I love it because I, I feel like that Isaiah Hardenstein kind of allows him to do that, roam a little yeah. bit more. He doesn't have to worry as much about on the rebounding side. Like now mm -hmm. you get to play a little bit more loosely on the defensive end. And I, I see your point, though, because if he doesn't get those blocks, it's not like he can be supported by like, oh, a heavy point total or really anything else. It's like right. that is the thing that is is carrying his value a little bit. I don't know. I still feel like out of him, you know, I feel like the upside is still there. He's can't a year, a year removed from the Liz Frank injury. And I feel like that was one of the things coming in was like, I think he had a minutes restriction to start the year off last year. And then it kind of built up. So if, if he, I think that's the one thing is if he is the guy for them, if he is the one that takes the lead, because there's a few of them, there's a few dogs on that team. If he's the one that takes the lead, I think top five is like the floor for him. So one person that I think I'd compare him to is Jaron Jackson Jr., because Jaron Jackson Jr., not a great rebounder, but he's like, okay, um, decent score, right? But his block just putting him on a whole nother fucking plateau. Yeah. And I, if he gets the blocks, he's going to be right in that conversation. If he doesn't get the blocks, he's going to fall. And you're yeah. going to be like, oh, shit, why did I take this guy that high? But I still think he's going to be solid, but we'll see. I, I like yeah, the Chet didn't get that. Or no, not Chet. Uh, Jaron Jackson didn't get that last year, and we saw his value take a major hit. Mm-hmm. And he still got better in other areas because of all the injuries, but the blocks didn't hit. But that's like actually like to your point of like bringing in Hartenstein. Um, I actually feel like that's going to be a good thing for the Memphis Grizzlies too, that they got a big man now, because I think some of these stretch four mold archetype type guys are going to be even better when they have like an anchor center because they can just get those those chase down blocks. They can get the perimeter shots. There's like seven feet tall going to contest a three pointer by like Steph Curry, like. They're going to get some blocks there. So I think when they give someone like Chet is going to benefit being in like a safety type role where he kind of roam around, not being close to the rim all the time. The discount Wemby, get him while you can in the second <laughs> round. <laughs>